Good evening, I'm Daniel Gibson. First tonight, Manly's Dylan Walker and West Tigers' Zane Musgrove are the latest players to be sidelined by the NRL's new code of conduct. After a summer of shame, the sanctions came thick and fast for players and officials. It puts a stain on every player and it puts a stain on the entire game. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. Another two high-profile federal government front benches are set to quit at the next election. Defence Minister Christopher Pine and his junior minister Steve Chobo are expected to announce their retirements tomorrow. We will never get a... Refusing to make news on his own program. Do you think if I announce a retirement on Sky, Pine and Miles will go from 12 viewers to 25 viewers over? That would be a big jump. The self-proclaimed fixer now fixing to jump ship. You'll all find out in the fullness of time when at the appropriate time. Mark Riley, 7 News. A Sydney company director has been arrested over an alleged $40 million fraud involving the National Australia Bank. Police claim the 43-year-old was involved in a kickback scandal that could implicate some senior bank executives. She's accused of paying kickbacks in exchange for lucrative contracts. And today it all came crashing down for Helen Rosamont. Andrew Denny, 7 News. Talking money, let's check finance while we are. The Australian shares have finished the week higher. In fact, our market has hit its highest level in five months. One Aussie dollar will buy you 70.92 US cents. High-profile detective Gary Jubelin says he'll vigorously fight allegations that have sparked an internal inquiry. The families of murder victims are also publicly supporting the respected investigator. Never shy of a complex case, never shy of the spotlight. That's all I can say at the moment. Always there for his victims' families. The identity of Melbourne's notorious lawyer X has been revealed. Nicola Gobbo represented a who's who of Australia's worst underworld gangsters. At the same time, she was a police informant. She worked with drug kingpin Tony Mockbell and some major players in the Calabrian Mafia and was a member of Carl Williams' inner circle. Now, a Royal Commission is set to be launched, putting all of the 386 convictions she was involved in, in doubt. An asylum seeker has been jailed for setting fire to a bank. Customers were forced to run for their lives, all because the 24-year-old was sick of waiting to be served. He poured 11 litres of petrol across the floor before a ball of fire engulfed the Commonwealth Bank. The man who crashed a stolen truck into a hotel in the Hunter Valley town of Singleton has been sentenced to 12 years behind bars. 31-year-old Rodney Johnson led police on a 100-kilometre chase before smashing into shop fronts and injuring eight people. New police dash cam footage shows the extent of the, uh, the October 2017 rampage. He'll be eligible for parole in 2024. Well, the state's most heavily armed political party is threatening an election revolution. The Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party has revealed it's doing deals with Labor and One Nation to help it seize half the state. The party best known for shooting animals says it now wants to help them and the families that farm them. Veteran Australian journalist Mike Willis, he has died. We'll look back at his incredible career later for you soon. But uh, next, some revelations. The captain behind this cargo ship smash was himself smashed at the time. And a man finds out the high, hard way rather, why you should never drive across a flooded causeway. A mother and her son have been mauled by a dingo on Queensland's Fraser Island beach. They were flown to hospital, the boy suffering lacerations to his face, legs and arms. His mother was badly bitten on her leg. It's believed the French nationals were set upon after stepping out of their car. It's the second dingo attack on the island in just over a month. Returning overseas and US President Donald Trump insists he and Kim Jong-un remain good friends and will talk again, despite failing to reach agreement on a nuclear deal. The American leader returned home empty-handed after the abrupt end to the Hanoi summit. It was a day nothing much went to plan for Donald Trump. Even the motorised stairs for Air Force One broke down. A driver has been rescued outside Jerusalem after flash flooding left him clinging to the roof of his car. Emergency crews managed to wade through the raging water to drag him to safety. The dramatic rescue broadcast live across the country. Days of torrential rain there have swamped the region with warnings about the potential of further flooding. The captain of a Russian cargo ship that crashed into a bridge in South Korea yesterday was drunk at the time. The 6,000 ton tanker veered off course and hit the overpass before trying to turn around and sail away. 
A ship was intercepted by the Korean Coast Guard who found the captain was three times the legal alcohol limit. The vessel had earlier hit a moored cruise ship in the harbour. 90s TV heartthrob Luke Perry is in an induced coma in hospital after suffering a massive stroke at his home in Los Angeles. The 52-year-old actor is best known for his role in the long-running teen drama Beverly Hills 90210. It was struck down on the same day a reboot of the show was announced, starring many of the original cast. Well, imagine being paid $465 million to play sport. We'll tell you more on that soon. And what sparked another rant from Aussie tennis bad boy Nick Kyrgios? Tell you next. Tonight's sport brought to you by Ladbrokes. Markets available now at ladbrokes.com.au. As we reported earlier, Manly's Dylan Walker is the second player to be stood down under the NRL's strict new rules on player behaviour. Walker won't return to court on domestic violence charges until May and will miss at least 11 premiership matches. The Titans coach, Gareth, uh, Garth Brennan, rather, backs the hardline stance. Any violence or towards women or children should not be accepted at, 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 at any stage or in any environment or in any culture. Here, here, Bulldogs prop Dylan Napa was fined $60,000 for the lewd videos that were posted online. The West Tigers are in New Zealand for trial against the Warriors tomorrow. Michael Maguire praised the impact of Benji Marshall and Robbie Farah in pre-season, but says the veterans still need to earn their spots in the team. They'll be uh, just like everyone else. Yeah, they perform, they uh, get their opportunities each week and they're well aware of that. Yeah, Josh Reynolds is competing for Marshall with the number six jersey. We can also reveal that Dragons hooker Cameron McInnes is close to joining the Eels. Cricket and Aussie coach Justin Langer has balked at moving Glenn Maxwell up the batting order for the one-day series in India. The star of our T20 triumph is expected to drop back down to number seven for game one in Hyderabad tomorrow. I will wait and see. If he keeps batting like that, do you think it's more likely he will get a promotion? Or? Yeah, we'll do what's best for the team, I reckon, yeah. So we'll, we'll see how we go. Now, we don't like a pay rise, am I right? I'm right, stay with me. But few of us can ever expect this. American baseballer Bryce Harper has just signed a record contract with the Philadelphia Phillies. Get this, it's a 13-year deal worth a whopping $465 million. The 26-year-old will earn around $220,000 per game. Should have played baseball. Uh, we'll have a look back at the career of veteran Aussie journo Mike Willisey. That's next in Prime 7 News. And Ali will have a look at your weather details. Wynn has sent in tonight's photo taken at Emerald Beach. Time now for a look at the weekend weather details. It's something that Ellie Wicks is going to enjoy because you've been in the sick bed all week. It's nice to oh, see you back. You okay? I have. I am. I'm good. I'm, I'm well. Thank you. Well, not great, but anyway. Good evening, everyone. It was a warm end to the working week for most of us with a clear satellite, just some patchy clouds over the southeast and along the coast. We had onshore winds that created some unsettled weather. This weekend, we are expecting to heat up across inland New South Wales and northeasterly breeze will help us feel warmer again. The coast will continue to experience showers and partly cloudy conditions and those showers are expected to be quite light over the weekend but as we can see from our rainfall chart we could be seeing more than 25 millimetres over the next eight days elsewhere though we're looking pretty dry. Let's have a look at our temperatures for Saturday now. It will be sunny in Wagga with a top of 34 degrees, milder conditions in Orange with a top of 26 there. Over the coast Wollongong 25, showers throughout, coughs heading for a top of 26 degrees and checking out what's happening around the country our southern areas are heading for absolute scorches 37 degrees down here and Adelaide even hotter 41 how about that it's amazing we're just coming out of our hottest summer on record I as know well. and it's not over by the yeah, looks of it on. thanks Ellie. Mm. good on you okay that is it for Ellie and the weather but we can't go tonight because what we want to do is for 50 years he was a giant of current affairs and a trailblazer of broadcast news veteran journalist Mike Willisey has passed away after a battle with throat cancer the 76 year old is credited with destroying a would-be Prime Minister and discovering Paul Hogan Mike was a titan of television current affairs. Hello, thanks for joining us. A master of the interview, he could equally charm, chat with celebrity and crucify the powerful. Mike Willisey was 76. Michael Usher, 7 News. And that's your news for this Friday, the 1st of March. Thanks again for your company. Bye for now. Have a great weekend.